Hello, we're going to start a sequence of a fair few videos on information security by talking about three main information security principles. So information security is about protecting information. I'm sure I've said this before and I'll definitely say it again, but information is often the most important asset an organization has. An asset is something which is useful to the organization and of course, companies, people have loads of assets. But information is often crucial because First of all, it's often how the company works, you know, it relies on that information every single day. For example, a bank, a lot of what it does is relying on account details, which are stored. If they were lost, if they were breached somehow, it would have a massive consequence. They might get fined based on laws of the Data Protection Act. They might get sued and they might lose a lot of customers because of it. So it's often crucial, it's important, it's kept safe. I mentioned the word breach. A breach happens when information is either deleted when it shouldn't be or accessed by someone who shouldn't have access. So a breach happens when something goes a bit wrong related to information and it can be accidental and it can also be deliberate. And breaches happen unfortunately all the time. It's hugely important for organizations, which is why this is such an important topic to learn about. Just me Googling just now, Uber at the time of recording had quite a bad cyber attack in the last few days where somebody managed to, apparently a teenager, managed to get in and go into their internal systems. That was quite a severe security breach. It sounds, from reading it, some of their security was a little bit weak, actually. To support people getting good security, as you would hope, there are three fairly well-known principles of good information security, which we're gonna go through one by one. The first one I want to mention is confidentiality. And by the way, often these three, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are shortened to the CIA triad, a triad just being three things. So if it helps you remember these principles, you can think of CIA triad. And the C stands for confidentiality. So this is the idea of information should only be accessed by people that are authorized to do so. If you are authorized, it means you've been given permission. So maybe you are an employee, maybe you are working on that particular file, only you should be able to access it. To give an example of where maybe this is done well in an organization, if the more important the files are, the fewer number of people are allowed access, that is a good example of thinking about confidentiality. You should only allow access to people who actually need access. And that idea of having different levels of access is called having tiered levels of access. And for an example of where maybe this is done badly, let's say you've got passwords being routinely shared around and lots of staff still using their default passwords. That would be an example of where potentially somebody who is not authorized might kind of gain access to something they shouldn't do. Right, a default password is where the original password hasn't been changed. So often this will be quite weak, something like password one, two, three. Attackers can target one or more of these three principles, but often confidentiality is the one they target. And the attacks that access personal information are what you might describe as severe breaches of this confidentiality. So anything personal makes the level of severity a bit higher. The second principle is integrity. So integrity is all about the idea that information should be maintained, should be looked after, so that it is up to date, accurate, and useful for its purpose. It needs to be kept in a useful state. One of the ways a company might try and increase the integrity is to encrypt information when it's sent over a network in order to prevent an attacker intercepting these messages and changing the key details. So keep it encrypted, we'll look at that as a measure later on in the next few videos, but this is where the data is scrambled up and so the attacker can't really do much with it, they can't change it and damage it. To give an example of where this could be done badly, well if your company is keeping no record of the changes that authorized users make to the secure servers, then you don't really know if those authorized users are keeping it accurate. You might have somebody working for you who sneakily is changing some data and you don't know about it and so you can't guarantee the information has got integrity. A lot of integrity is about checking that things are accurate, ensuring that things aren't being changed when they shouldn't be. And so the main way that attackers will target integrity is tampering with the information, so changing it. A good example is, say, for a bank, an attacker might try and change their bank balance so they gain more money. That would obviously be quite a serious issue of integrity. The last principle, availability, is maybe the easiest of the three to understand, actually. This is the idea that information should be easy to access and use by those who need it. So those people who are authorized 
shouldn't be too limited in accessing the information they should be allowed to access. The reason for this is sometimes I think companies add so much security, it makes it almost unusable for authorized users. So an example of where this might be done well is having a fast and reliable network that is encrypted and accessed through two-factor authentication. The encryption and two-factor authentication makes it fairly secure, but that's not exactly a big barrier. Anyone can log in. It's not really affecting access, although it is still keeping things confidential, hopefully. And reliability is important. If things are going down all the time, that obviously affects availability. To give an example of where maybe the company is going too far with this, maybe they might require every employee to get written permission by the CEO to access any bit of information held on the server. That is, I would almost certainly say, too much and would massively affect availability. It might be really good for confidentiality and integrity, but for availability, that is going too far. There are some attacks which will target availability. So for example, if the attack is targeting a specific server by flooding it with high amounts of malicious traffic, they may try and crash the server and that will affect availability of people trying to use it. This is sometimes called a DDoS attack.